it doesn't care if bodies are together, whether it's a special love relationship or whether it's a, a small little community forming, so to speak, or you're coming together to to come to enlightenment, the ego does not care if the bodies are together. Very well, it says, I'll give you that much. You've done it. You've got your bodies together under one roof. You know, it's like a lot of times, you know, people think somehow that that it's always part of those grass is greener on the other side. And somehow, you know, if I could, if we, oh, if I could just live with like-minded individuals, or I could just live with, with other course students, or this, this, and that. I mean, all these pie-in-the-sky kind of things, as if somehow... That, and everybody would understand me yes, and everything. They would all speak <laughs> my language, yeah. and this and that, and yeah. then, you know, the ego just says, says, well, very well then. You know, if you go ahead, get those bodies, like Mother Goose or Mother Hen, gather them all together under one roof. But the whole point of the ego is, but keep the minds private. And that's the thing that the deceived mind doesn't want to give up. It, it likes that autonomous feeling. It likes that, that privateness, that uniqueness. It likes to have its space. I mean, how many times have you heard that phrase, you know, I need more space? You just have to give people their space. You know? That time when we were down at the trailer that one time and we were doing all this was it digging in the garden or whatever? And I remember you saying, "Just I just got to go off in the woods. <laughs> just got to have my space." And really, that what the mind is saying is just the deceived mind saying it wants its space. It seems like a lot of times it involves taking off and removing the body, but really the thing that is underneath it is the mind wants to keep its own individuality. individuality. conversation in the kitchen about, you know, just the resistance to going down to the unemployment office. And those are the kind of things, when you are feeling even a little bit of resistance, it's, it's good to try to, I heard you both kind of trying to go into it a little bit, and there, but those are the kind of things that we're talking about, about taking it down, 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 to start to see what is really going on here. Because on the surface, it's, well, it can just seem... Like, oh, I'm just trying to deal with it, or it's, it's trivial. And that was kind of the experience when we were down in Adrian, num the beginning of the week. A number of people, you know, later in the week they were able to say, well, I, I just had never talked about a lot of this stuff, because it just seems too trivial to be bringing up in a group or wasting my time even talking about kind of like those are the things you're expected to deal with. And there's a lot of times it seems like there's so many of them that life would be one continuous session if you always <laughs> were laying out every twinge of irritation and every twinge of upset, much less the, the seeming major ones. It just seems like it would be full of it. But for our purposes, you know, it really comes down to spare no thought, <laughs> you know, kind of, you have to start to see that that's part of the, the ego system, and that minor irritation is the same as a major. I mean, there's really no distinction between the two. Is that something you want to go into? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but you ask me, I don't know. Just the irritation. I don't know how further to describe it. I guess I don't think of going into it deeply or is necessarily describing it any more than you did, but it's just a matter of, you know, getting underneath to what's really going on, what the thoughts and beliefs are that would have those feelings be that way. I mean, like David said, I think that's, you know, 
That's the very kind of thing we're talking about bringing to session. Yeah, and I understand that that's what I'm supposed to do. And one of the things that I I have that I I don't feel like I don't want to feel like I'm being prompted or pulled into that I should be able to bring it to when I'm ready to bring it to. So I don't know. It's a different mode of of, of being and experiencing things. You know, when I know for much of my life, it was very, I was very shy. I was very reserved. I didn't talk in my family. I didn't talk to counselors. My friends and I, we would get into some things, but it was like things were never explored. I had it, was, it wasn't until I got into college and began doing just a lot of contemplation and exploration, going to movies, watching my emotions, reactions, tracing, starting to ask more and more questions about my mind that it started to clear up a bit. But it's certainly, I think the biggest fear for me always was, I don't want to talk about all that stuff, you know, dredge up all that stuff, because I think there was a fear partly that it could be used against me, you know. If I start, if I start talking about all these little upsets that I have here and there with people, you know the old thing about trusting someone enough to tell them something like that. Fear was of, well, I don't, I don't want to open up and and tell all of my secrets or tell all of my, you know, issues and things that are going on. There's a feeling that sometimes somehow they could be used against me some way. You know that that's always a a thing. Even with in psychotherapy sessions, that's part of the whole thing in psychotherapy is develop a trust, develop a trust with the between the patient and the therapist, so that there's a sense of of confidentiality and so on and so forth, so that one can can reveal. And it's a different. That's a much different mode than the normal mode of of wearing the mask and brushing things under the rug, so to speak, or, you know, all the defense mechanisms are are made to keep one's sense of separateness and uniqueness protected. And it's to go in the other direction. It seems very unusual or awkward at the beginning, but it's essential to kind of reverse and I think one of the differences too is in the session when we um, when we might ask someone, you know, I know at times I've been asked, you know, what what are you feeling or what's going on in it. It's I think you know what I've come to see is that it's more of an invitation versus a you know prying or or um, pushing or somebody else, you know, thinking that I need to resolve an issue, it's not coming from that place. That's not the intention behind it. The intention behind it is to invite each other because we've all been in that place where we don't, where we think, oh, I just don't want to go into this. It just, it feels like it would be worse to talk about it. But knowing, but having the experience of doing it and seeing that it actually is very helpful. But initially, it can seem like it doesn't feel like it would be helpful to go into it. And I think, you know, I think just from having the experience of that, I've come to see that, you know, it's always it's always beneficial for me. Um, And, you know, like you say too, Tom, you know, you have to be ready to do that and you have to be ready and willing to be in a place to do that. Because you don't want to do it when you're feeling like it's, you know, being dragged out of you or something. Nobody wants to do that. One of the things I heard you say, and I think it applies 
across the board because I've heard it so many ways and I remember saying it myself. It was, it's like the feeling is kind of like, I just don't see why I have to deal with this. And I know I've done it. I remember when I was in high school with so many different things, you know, it just seemed, at the time I felt like life in general just seemed so overwhelming. And I, there was lots of things with school and preparing for the future and planning a career. You know, even when I was in, in uh, a freshman, I remember going to, you know, the career development kinds of classes and taking all these different tests and looking into all these things. And I'm in ninth grade, I'm just wondering, you know, what am I doing all this for? And I, I just it felt so overwhelming and ambiguous. And I've heard the same things, you know, when I've talked to teenagers and young adults. A lot of times when they deal with issues, for instance, like pregnancy, it's kind of like, it just seems so overwhelming. It just seems like I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with this, right? There's, it seems like a complicated mess. And in general, everyone who comes to this world has gone through that same thing. They have made a, a series of decisions that have brought them to that place. I mean, decisions about everything. Whenever, you know, when I decided to go to college, that was a decision. It came a point in college where I remember my parents saying, well, from this point on we've decided that, you know, we are not going to um, pay for your college. So I had to make a decision at that point. Do I continue on? If I do, do I try to do college, all the classes and work, you know, and do that thing? Or do I just take out a loan, student loans? and?" tried to go through college that way and then pay them off afterwards, that was a decision. I opted for the student loans. So then I, you know, you go along. It's just like when you decide to get married, that's a decision. When you decide to have children, that's a decision. When you decide to do anything in this world, it's kind of just like all these decisions are are kind of like a sequence and series of them, and it's kind of like stepping into the dream world with all these decisions. Each one just is kind of another layer of it. And the only way to, to leave the dream world is to, to kind of retrace your steps, is the way Raj says it a lot of times. You know, you've got to go back and retrace the steps. And yes, the feeling I know for a lot of adolescents when they're feeling overwhelmed, you know, the feeling is I didn't ask to come here, or for a lot of people to begin the spiritual journey, you know, the whole thing about wanting to take the rope up out real quick. It's like once you weave yourself in, you have to kind of unweave, unweave your mind out of it. And in one sense, I think the word that comes to mind too is just a thoroughness. You, know, you have to really be thorough in your retracing. Mm -hmm. And we've all done that. Yes. You know, we've spent years doing that. It's not like any one of us has skipped that step. Mm -hmm. Which step? Of retracing. Oh. Carefully. We've all wanted the rope too. Yeah, I think. Oh, I certainly have. Especially last few days. 